Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be doing a review of my San Quentin 3 frame set. Uh, I'm going to go over the pros, I'm going to go over the cons, and um, yeah, hopefully it's enjoyable. If I sound a bit rough, uh, I've been really ill for the last week or so. Um, so yeah, I've had a horrific cough, really bad temperature, basically been bedridden for about the last five, six days. So Bear with me if it's sounding a bit rough, uh, but hopefully it's not too bad, and hopefully you can still enjoy the video. So yeah, let's crack on. Uh, I said I was going to do this video about four weeks ago now, but I've had a lot of stuff in the way, work and whatnot. So we're finally here. I'm going to be doing kind of a final review on my Marion San Quentin uh, 3 frame set. So, um, yeah, here it is. Unfortunately, obviously, it's not a full bike at the moment. It's just the frame. The entire bike is in the boxes here. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go over a couple of the pros and uh, pros and cons of the frame, what I like about it, what I don't. And, um, yeah, hopefully it's informative and uh, enjoyable to watch. So, the first thing I want to cover is the paint job. The paint job on this bike is absolutely awesome. It looks really good. It's a really nice colour. Uh, it's got a nice little fade to black down the back. Um, and yeah, I've got this dye bro kit on it, which looks really good. It's starting to come off in places, but that's not the end of the world. So the only negative thing with the paint work is the paint is quite uh, it's quite cheap. It, it's not very high quality. Obviously, it's fine, uh, but it does chip quite easily. Uh, like, you'll be able to see it from here, but I'll put a picture in here on the, uh, the ISCG tab. Uh, is chipped and I didn't even use that for anything that just chipped on its own accord all in the top of the seat post here is really chipped uh, and there's some chips under here as well uh, so yeah it chips quite easily uh, but other than that fantastic and uh, yeah it looks great now let's go on to the real pros and cons of this frame I'm gonna start with the pros and then we'll move to the cons shortly so the first pro is the geometry on this bike is awesome. For me anyway, it's almost exactly what I want out of a hardtail. It's got short 425 chainstay across all sizes. Um, uh, 65 degree head tube angle with a 130 mil fork. I ran it with a 150 mil fork, uh, which slackened out by about a degree to 64, uh, which worked really well. I really liked how it felt. The reach on this, which is a medium, uh, is 444 millimeters uh, as standard obviously putting the longer fork on it uh, will have shortened it up ever so slightly uh, but it still felt absolutely great and yeah I think it's got a nice uh, short seat tube 430 millimeters on the medium and obviously it gets a bit longer and shorter as you go up and down the sizes um, but yeah it's it's really good geometry uh, actually for for what you want a hardtail to do it's it's planted when you're going uh, but then it's also great on like pump tracks and you know more poppy stuff. It can really pop, uh, which is really nice. Another another positive is it doesn't weigh very much at all. Um, so yeah, it's a nice lightweight base uh, to start from, which is really good. Also has a bottle cage mount here, which is standard two points. So a bottle cage can sit in here quite nicely. Uh, another pro is. The internal cable routing. Personally, I'm not a fan of internal cable routing. Obviously, it makes the bike look super slick, really nice, but I just find it a lot of hassle, especially if you're building it up from the frame like I did. It's a lot of hassle. So, um, yeah, it looks good, but it's pain. Uh, there is a con regarding the um, regarding the internal cable routing and the drop post, which I shall uh, I'll put in a timestamp if I remember for when I cover that in the cons. It has a 309 millimeter seat tube, which is quite small. It's, uh, I think the smallest like standard size, uh, which is all right, but it does make them a bit harder to come by. And obviously you might be limited to like some travel ranges. Uh, I'd recommend the E13 Vario dropper post. That's the one I used. Absolutely fantastic. You can change the travel of the, the like change the drop. So it was adjustable from 150 to 180 millimeters of drop, 
uh, without any tools, which is really cool. So yeah, I'll put a link to that down in the description. Make sure to check that one out. Really good drop post. Another pro is out of the box, you get a chainstay protector on it. It's not much, it's just a bit of rubber. Uh, unfortunately, one got caught on something and got all uh, all mangled. Uh, but yeah, it works really well uh, to stop you from chipping your frame, which is which is always a nice feature. And the final uh, pro for this bike is if you buy it as a frame, you actually get a headset with it as well, which is nice because it means you'd have to buy one. It's just an FSA uh, FSA headset, but uh, it does the job. It lasted me about nine months before it started creaking. Moving on to the cons of this frame. The first major one that I want to point out, which was the first one that jumped out to me when I got this frame, was the internal cable routing. So the internal cable routing for your dropper post goes in here, down the frame, out of here, and then it goes across the frame here, up into here into the seat tube, which seems great. However, with the seat post I had, the E13 one, the, when the seat post was all the way down, as far as it would go, the, the bottom bit with the cable would actually sit about here, so it couldn't go all the way down because it meant that it would like push the cable, meant the, which meant the drop post would always extend. And that's purely just because of where this is on the seat post. If this was down here, or um, how it was on the new proof where it comes in, it comes out underneath here, and round and through and in down here that wouldn't have been an issue and that is just an issue with this method of cable routing so that's something to be aware of uh, if you like your seat post super slammed on a short seat tube this may be in the way but luckily for me I couldn't quite get it all the way down but there was only about two or three millimeters of, uh, of gap at the top so that's uh, that's all right um, but yeah that's something just to be aware of when uh, when you get in this frame Another negative is, this is quite a, a specialised one uh, to specific components from what I can see. These rear brake mounts are inside the frame here, so your caliper sits here. Looks really good, keeps it protected because it's got this, uh, this stay over the top of it, which is nice. However, I could not run a Hope 180mm disc in the back with so a Hope brake and a Hope adapter didn't actually fit on this because the way it works is it would actually move the caliper too far over backwards uh, to get it to line up which meant it would hit the stay here which actually meant that it pushed the caliper inwards meaning it would always rub on the rotor and there's no no way to fix that so yeah you can't run a 180 uh, it's a 160 mil uh, standard post which is odd, especially for this type of bike, you would expect it to be 180 because 160 is quite small. But obviously you can get adapters and stuff, but that's the thing to note, you can't run a Hope 180. And the, the final con, again, isn't really much, um, is basically, from what I can figure, this seat clamp is not a standard seat clamp. And it's really difficult to get your seat post into the seat tube. It's really stiff and tight for some reason. And I could not figure out why, even once you've fully backed off the seat clamp, uh, as far as it'll go, it's still almost impossible, like, you really have to put some force into it. That could just be my frame, I don't know whether that's an experience other people have had with their San Quentins, but that's an issue I had, it was really difficult to get it in there, which obviously isn't ideal and it didn't really help. But, um, but obviously yeah, that's, a, that's just a minor thing, so just things to be aware of. But overall, I think this is an absolutely fantastic frame, and it turns into an absolutely fantastic bike that looks really good, handles really good. It's just, yeah, really good frame, and I think it's pretty reasonable. I think I paid four hundred and fifty pounds for this ship, so it's not not horrendously expensive. Uh, especially if you get one second hand, you can pick them up for anywhere between uh, about three hundred quid. Uh, you can get a second hand one of these frames, or you can get a second hand one of the bikes for 800 quid which is really affordable for what you get i think that's everything covered if you have any questions at all let me know in the comments ask me in the comments i'll do my best to answer them to the best of my ability and um yeah i hope this was helpful to someone who might be getting one of these um so yeah thank you very much for watching and i will see you guys in the next video peace it's even got my name on it Sick as this, my
tiny little tractor chair. Everyone loves the tractor chair.